Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about a specific type of cell that we've already mentioned known as the SEM cell. Okay, we're going to talk about exactly what it is, what it can do, and why it's really useful in treating diseases and also in the development of humans. Okay, so let's just get right into it. So what is a stem cell? A stem cell is a cell that still has the capacity to renew itself. Okay, so a stem cell can divide to form new stem cells, okay, so it's kind of replacing itself, and it also has this property known as potency, which means that it can differentiate, right, into different types of cells. So we said that in the previous video that, that cell differentiation is when we develop into specialized tissues, right, and stem cells are the cells that are able to perform these different functions, okay? so. Stem cells have two properties, they can self-renew and they have this, this potency, okay? So the ability to differentiate into different types of cells. But there are different degrees or different strengths of potency, okay? There are four different types of, of, of strength that stem cells can have, okay? They can be totipotent, which means that they can literally differentiate into any sem, uh, cell type, okay? even what we call extra embryonic tissue. Now, you don't really need to know exactly what that means, but essentially all it is is that it can develop into structures like the placenta, okay? So in the embryo, when a, when a cell is developing into a human eventually, right? All the cells that are within the embryo itself that are going to form the human, those are the embryonic tissues. And something like the placenta, that's not actually part of the embryo itself. That's what we call extra embryonic. And so um, totipotent cells can form both these types of cells. So those are the kind of like the, the king of stem cell. They can form any type of cell. Fine. Then we get some cells that can differentiate into any cell type, but not these extra embryonic tissues. Okay. And we call those pluripotent. So still very strong. We then have the multipotent uh, cells. Uh, so these are a, a very small uh, a stem cells that can differentiate into a small number of related cells. So one example would be the, the stem cell that can form all the different types of blood cells, right? So white blood cells, red blood cells, okay? Those are what we call hematopoietic stem cells. And uh, you don't have to know this, by the way, you just have to understand what, the, what this principle means. So all these cells, these, these blood cells are related to each other, right? So the hemopoietic stem cell can form these different types of blood cells, but it couldn't go off forming a neuron, for example. So that's why it's multipotent. And then finally, we have the unipotent stem cells. So these are, are what we also call as progenitor cells, and they can simply differentiate into one other type of cell. Um, you find these in muscle tissue. So these are stem cells that can form new muscle if regeneration is necessary, but they can only form one specific cell type. Okay, so those are different things you need to know about stem cell potency. Now, you also have to understand that differentiation and stem cells is obviously going to be very necessary in the development. So what we mean by that is when we need to form, uh, go from one cell to a fully functioning human, right? A very pretty human here, right? In order to do this process, we need cell differentiation, right? Because we need different types of cells to form a human. So it's necessary in development. And then it's also useful in medicine. So there are two different diseases that I recommend you know for the exams. Um, the first is Stargardt's disease, which is essentially a disease of the eye. So this is an eye here. And at the back of the eye, you have an area that's responsible for taking in the light and kind of reading the messages that light sends. Okay, and we call this area the retina. And in Stargardt's disease, this is a genetic disease that causes the retina to break down, okay? And so people will eventually go blind when they have this disease. So it's getting worse and worse and worse. But stem cells are really powerful in treating this disease because essentially what you can do is you can inject stem cells into the retina and these stem cells are then going to differentiate and replace the cells that have been damaged, right? Which is obviously gonna be really powerful because now you're gonna have a healthy retina. The other uh, useful uh, application in medicine, you can actually decide what disease you want to study for this. So Stargardt's you, you have to know as a named example, but you also have to know one other example. I recommend leukemia, which is essentially a, a type of cancer where the, the white blood cells are somehow aberrant. So that means that they're, they're somehow dividing and not forming as they should be, and, and to a certain extent out of control, okay? Now, the way that you can treat leukemia is that you can take stem cells, okay? So you, you're first going to store stem cells, and this can either come from the patient themselves, 
or it can come from uh, someone else, okay? So you somehow have to harvest stem cells and we're gonna put these stem cells in a little beaker and kind of store them, okay? And then you're going to take the patient that's suffering from leukemia and you're going to treat them with chemotherapy and with radiotherapy, okay? And essentially what this will do is that it will, it will destroy all of the bad cells, to a certain degree also some of the healthy cells, but it's going to hopefully just kill as all of the cells that are, that are dividing uncontrollably and look really weird like this, okay? So those are the bad ones. And then once you've depleted all of the, stem, all of the, the, the white blood cells, you're then going to inject new healthy stem cells into the patient again and hopefully the idea is that this new stem cell can act as the precursor to the ones that that we've now destroyed but hopefully this next time around they're going to form in the, in the, in the proper way okay so that's kind of leukemia and how stem cells can replace the damaged white blood cells and then the second to last thing you need to know is that there are different ethical considerations for how we obtain our stem cells, okay? Because there are different sources of stem cells, right? We can take what we call embryonic stem cells, so that those are the stem cells that are found when something is, is de developing into a human, right? Um, those cells that you have at the very beginning of this process are called embryonic cells, okay? Now, when we take stem cells from embryonic tissue, typically it's not like we take it out of, of someone that is, uh, that, that is pregnant, but rather you form them in a, in a Petri dish um, j simply for the process of, of harvesting them and then for treating diseases with them, okay? You can also get uh, stem cells from the umbilical cord or the, of a newborn baby, okay? So from that, from that blood that you have in the umbilical cord, you can harvest stem cells as well or you can take them from adult tissue. So for example, in the bone marrow, we have some, some stem cells that we can harvest, all right? Now, so there, there's three different sources of stem cells, and there are pros and cons to each of these different sources. So for example, embryonic tissues, those are really powerful, right? Those are those totipotent cells that we talked about, or the pluripotent cells that we talked about in the first slide, right? And so they have a huge yield of the potential kind of applications that they can be used for, right? Treat loads of different diseases. But on the other side, some people argue that this is the destruction of a potentially living organism, right? Because if you left this, these embryonic cells on their own, they could potentially develop into a living organism, right? So, so are you destroying life? Those are the pros and cons you have to weigh up. Umbilical cords, so they, these can still obviously cure diseases, not quite as powerful as the, as the, the embryonic ones, but at the same time, they're really costly to preserve, okay? So that might lead to only the wealthy in society being able to afford these treatments. So is this ethically, is this ethically valid? Something to discuss in, in paper two often. And then finally, these adult tissues, like in the bone marrow, so these can these can cure diseases. There's not really a chance of there's a lower chance of rejection, which essentially means that if you've taken the stem cells from a from a leukemia patient, so if you took the stem cells from that person in the first place before then giving it back to them after chemo, right? If you're taking them from the person themselves and then injecting it back into them, well then the body's probably going to respond just fine to that. But if you were to take another person, right, and take their stem cells out and then inject them into this person after chemo, there's a chance that the body won't accept these new stem cells. It will recognize them as damaging, and so it might destroy them, okay? So the, the key is that, that there's less chance of rejection, but there's obviously not this, this, this destruction of potentially living organisms. Um, on the other side, however, these adult tissues cannot be applied to, they aren't as potent as the embryonic ones, as you can't apply them to as many. Essentially, you just have to be able to argue both sides of the, of, 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 argue both sides of the, the discussion, okay? And think about that. All right, so the key points to take from this video is that stem cells can renew themselves and are able to differentiate into different cell types. There are different types of cells with different strengths and they're necessary in development, but really useful in medicine and that there are ethical considerations to take into account. So I hope that was useful.